It has been a long time since I've been able to do a video, but finally I have something to do a video about and I've got a little bit of time, although I sort of interrupted it while I was getting this started. Lighting's going to be terrible, which just irks me right now. So this is my new sewing machine. And this is one I've been able to purchase brand new in box, which I haven't done before. Now, there are other machines I did look at when I finally decided the functionality I wanted and the things I wanted to be able to do with the domestic machine that I purchased as my own decision. This isn't exactly 100% perfect, but it does have the essentials of what I need. So to begin with, when I got into uh, understanding the kind of functionality that I was after, I decided that I wanted something with a thread cutter. I wanted to do a little bit of embroidery. This machine doesn't have the type of embroidery that I would like to do. However, it does uh, do letters, numbers and symbols, which is preferable in my case. But this one also has a few other functions that I thought might end up being useful. Now, could I have purchased a better sewing machine? Yes, I looked at Janome. Uh, that had a couple of machines, that company has a couple of machines that I can buy locally. This isn't delivery, this is where I'm living at. Um, if I was more willing to go for delivery, uh, I came across a couple of Juki machines that I liked. I did look at Brother as a company, but not all of them were basically up to my standards. So. This is also really not up to my standards. However, this itself is a thousand dollar machine. It's normal retail price. It was on special during Mother's Day, so I got lucky and only spent about $500 on this. Now saying that, that's rounding it up. $9.99 for its normal retail price, $4.99 when it was on special. Why do I round it up? Well, because it just makes more sense to me. I really hate that. Let's cut the price down one cent or one dollar or ten dollars just to make it look better. And I'm like, eh, no. Now, while this machine, from what I've seen online, uh, Singer itself seems to be the only one that has videos on this particular machine. So my intention is to change that with this unboxing. I will either include the second module to this video, which will be me actually using the machine for clothing repair, which is something I need to do. And also testing out some of the embroidery functions. <laughs> I mean, holy hell. The thing that really pisses me off is that every single time someone does a review on these sort of things, they try to shove through as many um, layers of denim as possible. And I'm thinking, well, that doesn't tell me anything. I mean, it shows me that it can take a ton of material and just pass it through it, mostly. But it doesn't give me any sort of a, well, how does it handle when I'm trying to sew a pair of pants? Actually, I did see a video ever like that, but... Anyway... I'll be pointing out the things I don't like about this machine, because there's a number of the tools where I looked at this and I'm thinking, why? And when it comes to reviews, it's also really important that people need to comprehend and understand that just because you have negative feelings towards something or you dislike a particular part, not saying it can help one with stress. And two, it's really, it doesn't help um, people who are trying to find, you know, well, okay, does this machine have everything I want? Does this machine do this? Does this machine do that? The other thing is, just because this machine is missing some parts or doesn't have certain things that I want, doesn't mean that I can't go out and say, well, I have this machine. I'm going to go out and get this because this part exists. It's additional and it's also available. So yeah, the uh, my brother sewing machine, which is my daily driver, as I'm pretty sure the common term is nowadays, uh, I bought a wide table for it. And that made life 10 times easier for me. This machine also has a wide table and I still need to look at being able to invest in one. Right now, however, it kind of broke me financially getting this. So um, yeah, anyway, that's gonna be the induction and I will move on to unboxing this in my next clip. All right, so I'm at the point where I'm gonna open the box. 
I figured I'd do this on the floor just so it's easy to see what at least comes up in the opening part. Oops. There we go. Okay. I cannot understand any of that. What else do we have? So to start off with, we have an actual printed man. Oh, I wasn't expecting this. See, online, when I looked before, I didn't actually see a manual. So I went to the trouble of printing one out. <laughs> and it prints all right on A4. I mean, don't get me wrong. But I thought this book, this didn't actually come with a proper manual. Huh, because the previous model, um, without the C, didn't actually have one. So it was the uh, 6805, I think it was. But yeah, this is, um, huh. I couldn't find the 6800, or I think that one might actually come with more stitches, but I don't know. Anyway, that's, um, that's actually a decent surprise. There's a warranty. All right. Now I did keep a, my receipt, but because it's using that um, thermal stuff, I decided to make a copy of it. Now, straight off the bat, I can see, oh, that is a really shitty fabric. Yeah, so this is the same sort of material that uh, bags are made out of. And I'm not really happy about that. So I'm assuming that's a figure eight cable for power. Oh, I'm gonna go close with those. The box of goodies. And the walking foot. Something I already have. Not single brand though, but uh, if you're doing really th um, multiple layers of fabric, this makes life a lot easier. All right. Um, the styrofoam appears to be pressed together, so pulling it out shouldn't be that difficult. Now, ooh, that was nice. All right, I have it open. Now, I didn't see this before. This is the foot pedal. Okay, um, yeah, what have we got on here? Model C800, 15 volts, uh, 3 milliamps. Oof. Huh. Anyway, um, so yeah, the foot was in there. Yeah, there's really nothing on that. All right, so that is different compared to the previous model I've seen listed. The machine itself doesn't weigh a lot for me. That's good. Oh, another thing with the packing, uh, the double corrugated cardboard, I really like that. So let's see. Yep. that out. All right, that got out. Yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll be worried about that breaking over time. So I've looked at some of the older machines where they've gotten um, the metal plastic bits and they do tend to wear out, unfortunately. All right, so that's a bit of a thick plastic card, which is good. And the embroidery ones. Now, something I found out about this machine a bit later on is that it might, this one might be able to do a, yeah, here we go. Um, stitch number 25 looks like it's a bar tack, which is something I'm looking at doing and I shouldn't have been putting pressure on that, whoops. Yep. Now let's do the peel. <laughs> I 
that was terrible. I mean, it's really should be plastic. So what exactly was that covering up? Now, previous um, other videos I've seen on unboxing of these machine of previous model machines is that they've got uh, oh, what was it? Uh, one of them was already threaded. This one hasn't been. So I don't know if they've just changed their manufacturing method or what, but. Okay, so there's a tiny LED in there for the light, but I mean, that should be plenty bright enough for what I want. Looks like it was just covering up the hole there. Um, so yeah. That's taking it out of the box itself. Let's take a look at this. Oh. Yeah, in person, I would have appreciated if this was longer. I really would have. I mean, for a parts tray, I'd want something that I can fit like two or three fingers in. I can barely fit one. All right, so let's grab the parts. Now, I'm not seeing what something I saw before, which was a little collection. All right, so walking foot definitely fits in there easily, which is great. I mean, I saw some people put, but first off, needles. Uh, I'm not particular. Oh, only three. I'm not a fan of these little plastic envelope, uh, plastic bags for needles. That is your button foot and not too fussed about that. Felt. Now I'm assuming that's for up here. I would have liked it if this came in multiple sizes, but unfortunately not. This is horribly unimpressive. And oh, that's even, that's not the same as on the box. Yeah, okay, um, I'm not impressed with this. First off, cleaning brush. And second, unpicker, that's just ridiculous. It's too small. This looks like the cheap Chinese ones I've uh, purchased in a pack, so don't really need that foot. All right, I guess. Uh, additional spool pin, which I'll probably never use. Although, no, technically I might use it. All right, so it showed um, four bobbins. Turns out one of them's already preloaded into the machine. This I'm not a particular fan of. Uh, I can see it making it easy to remove the throat plate, but when it comes to, say, taking off the presser foot, and yes, I do take off the quick snap, of foot, uh, quick snap adjustment and put other entirely different um, feet on. Not really happy about this one. Um, I've played with them before and the ability to select what sort of length is just bleh. This one's, this one's a bit of a step up since you can adjust it with a knob. Yeah, for that. Not fond of plastic feet like this, despite my other purchase. Yeah, this is going to be useful. This one I'll probably never use. Absolutely necessary. This lets you put buttons on. And I honestly hate these zipper feet. They're, they're terrible. So stick that there. All right, so part, all the accessories fit in there. Whoops. All right, so my thoughts about the component tray and this up here. The fact that it's flat makes me feel a bit more comfortable, especially with some of the work that I do because the sort of rise up sometimes really feels annoying especially when you're working on a flat table. It, second, I can understand why they'd have this here, 
but if you need to shove something in under there that's a bit thick you might become well it might become a bit of an issue so the parts tricky i would have been happier if this was wider and just bigger overall so uh yeah that is my first impression of this machine now i'll tip it forward and show the top I actually like the fact that it is this uh, white color. It sort of stands out with the gray. Now, I'm not going to be firing it up just yet. Something I haven't played with before, and I thought about buying, was this foot that came, comes with the machine in general. Looks a bit more fancier. The plastic, it's a bit of a positive since you can get your pressure on that and also see through to where the fabric is. Ah, oh, and it's got two marks on here, okay. Now, for general usage, this foot probably won't... Okay, I can't see that. There it is. There we go. Lift it up, and in there. Personally, something I would like to see with domestic machines is a type of uh, industrial add-on where you can push your knee and the press foot will raise up and, right and go down. It, it's really useful when you're doing a lot of work. And I could see it helping me with a machine like this, but that would require some sort of a fancy mod here and it would be a bit difficult unless of course I went internally. Anyway, with that, uh, my next clip will hopefully be on actually testing the machine out. For now, I won't be able to run it, but hopefully in the future I will. Anyway, until the next one. Okay, so from the previous segment, I was talking about um, sewing feet. Now, on my previous machine, that I was mainly using, this was effectively the general purpose foot. Where on my new one, that's the new general purpose foot. So, you know, a bit 50-50. Uh, I've seen this one usually on a lot more expensive machines, so that's hoping that the machine itself is a uh, you know, better quality. Now that being said, the foot that I've generally been using when I've been doing a lot of my uh, regular sewing has been this one. I picked this one up off eBay for, actually I got it in a pack for about $50 and I was like 50 or 60 other feet, I mean yeesh. Been fun and been useful, but uh, this is the one I found for it, for my new machine. Now I'm just going to open it. Normally I wouldn't have paid for this, but I figured, well, it's close enough to what I'm looking for. And something I'm curious about is whether or not these marks would uh, indicate... No, they probably wouldn't indicate where to turn. Anyway, you can see there's a somewhat similar to both, although not exactly the same, which is a real pain. So what's this one? Quarter inch plastic. Huh. So... For this, I'm a little upset that it's plastic. Uh, it's almost the reason why I didn't buy it, which is a real shame. But here's hope that it just fits on and hopefully it does its job. Although in about probably 20 years time, this is gonna have turned yellow and cracked, especially around these supports because that's what the other ones have done that I have that are basically similar. Well, the plastic ones that I picked up second hand. Now, I am interested in giving this a go, and I will. And I'm also gonna give this one a go as well, because I am kinda of curious to see how it will work, especially with some of the jobs I need to do. Anyway, I'm gonna put those aside. And I better put these back, because I don't wanna lose them. Now, I was having a look at the foot, and some, the foot pedal, and something that concerns me about this, um, this here is a little loose, and I'm not too happy about that. 
The other question is, what's inside here? Oh, wow. So I really can't, but if you've seen that other video I did where I pulled apart a sewing machine foot, I think I did. I'm not 100% sure now. Oops. It looks like it's got that resistor in there, the slide potentiometer. So yeah. Now I'm just going to get that back in. And that doesn't sound healthy. Yep. Just make sure that's screwed. That's better. Probably shouldn't have done that, but anyway. Um. Hmm. So we got that. We got that. Now I'm gonna cut this and switch to another scene where I have my sewing machine set up. So until then. Well, that was a bit of a pain in the ass to set up. Finally, have it up on my desk. I'm going to put that back first and all I've done is connect in the foot pedal which I have to say the cable is way too damn short but something I didn't notice before looks like it's a regular 3.5 mil jack but mono um, maybe a little short I wonder if it's going to be difficult to modify anyway I'm going to be initializing power to the unit Whoops. There we go. And turning it on for the first time. Hmm. A lot gentler than before. Well, it was my uh, brother machine. So, generally it looks like it's ready to go, but not yet. First, I'm not going to be using up here. I'm going to be using one of these cones. So what I have is this thing, which will be sitting behind my machine and feeding thread into my uh, sewing machine. That's irritating, I'm sorry to say, but I feel like that's either going to break off snap or... Hmm. I'm not happy with that design choice. But that's cosmetic, not anything to do with the actual machine. So I don't want to sit that on the cable, but there we go. So how do you thread this POS? Oh, something I noticed. Uh, it turns out it does a bar tag stitch, which is down here. This is very useful, especially if you're making clothes, since it allows you to, well, it says in here, reinforced pockets, shirts, openings, belts, loops, blah, blah, blah. Something I was going to try to figure out how to do with a mechanical machine, but this thing does it uh, built in, so I was like, yay. Uh, we passed that point. All right, so do and bobbin. Uh, we don't come from here. Oh, that's completely out of shot. We don't come from here. We need to go to there, loop around, and back. All right. So, here. Now is it, yep, goes through bottom and then the top. And I will take this. I had a look at the Brother Machine uh, bobbins that I've got and they, they're almost identical, but not 100%, which is just a real shame. I mean, technically they should still work, but it means I'm not going to be able to use them all that much. This machine, oh well. Just hope the ones that 
spotlight cell where I bought this thing from actually work. So we've got that up there. What have we got? Uh, place some spool pins. Start and stop. That is not good. Did that fall over? All right, let's try that. Yeah, restart. Oh, that's embarrassing. speed. There we go. Let's see how it stops. Doesn't do a very good job of it. Hmm. All right, so I would say that is definitely wound. menu here um, where's the brightness because I don't need that light on stitch selection Save, sequence mode. That's something I'm going to have to learn later on. Okay. Um, let's see if I can do this properly. Built in needle thread allows a needle to quickly, the needle must be in the highest position, which it is. There, now it is. Definitely not doing that right. Um, oh. Easier. So. Down through there. Ooh. All right, I definitely don't like that. Uh, 
Let's see what else I don't like about it. So that can go in there. Just check if that's correct. Yep. Bobbin lead goes back on. And I put in some calico fabric. Put it down and start sewing. Four point five. Oh. Well, that's normal. Probably can't tell. No, oh, it actually came out pretty nice. I like that. Let's see what happens when I double it up and triple it up. <laughs> now I'm going to put it down to three and I'm going to give it a really difficult start. So usually if you're doing this, what you do is you have a piece cut off sewn together at the back just to help lever it up. Well, not normally, but... Well, at least that's how I would do it. Alright, so one thing I'm noticing is this is a lot quieter than my previous machine, which personally I like. Uh, I haven't tried any of the zigzag stitches yet. The threading thing, how it cuts, the, screws up the thread really ticks me off. But its actual function is fine. I mean, I'm happy with it. So that's what happens. Tie off, one forward, cut. Ooh, yeah, I like that. Hmm, okay. All right, that's that test done. Now, I'm going to set it to a stitch length of three. Just test to see what that looks like. I already should know. It's basically the same thing. It's a, a particular measurement, but just want to check. Oh, that is so nice. Just that snip feeling. It's coming through great. All right, so offhand, I've been able to get my way, get this to going. So what are we going to do next? Well, let's try this foot. Actually, this might be a lot better than the metal one. I'm finding it quite easy to line up with that red line at the front to get that particular... Ooh. Yeah, 
I like that. Huh. It'd be a shame when that finally does go wonky. Anyway, that's just an extra bobbin. I am going to go grab the other thing that I need. Okay, so I am back with my other thing, which is a pair of pants. Now, I uh, rubbed a hole in this, unfortunately, so I'm going to try to fix it. There. That's what happens when you have too much fat on you, unfortunately. So I need to lose weight. Before I continue, now, how do I keep the needle from going up? Pressing it up and down, move it up and down, setting. If the needle up, down, setting, see page 20. Needle automatic stop setting, needle up, down. Press the needle stop. Press the needle stop up, down to set the position. That didn't work. Ah, there we go, that button. So let's just try that. Let's increase it to three. Yeah, that is weird. Sorry, but having it stop in the down position is just weird. It's the machine's going, oh, um, should I have it down or should that's irritating. Alright, so that's come through the way I want. Ow! And I just pricked myself with one of those needles. Alright, I'm gonna stick that over there. Actually, no, I'm gonna stick it in the tray just in case. Now I need the inside of these under there. No. As you can see, I've already done a patch in here, but... Oh well. At least I can get that high enough. Now this is something you usually don't see when it comes to reviewing a sewing machine. Is someone actually using the bloody thing for something? So I'm going to set that down there. One, two, three. Back. In a line. The hole's not very big. Let's see. Try to keep it like that. That. There we go. So this is something that I need the machine to be able to do. And it's only running this slow because I've got it set at its lowest speed, which is what I want. And I'm going to stop for a sec. Of the leg through there. I swear this is ten times easier doing it on an industrial machine. I think next time I'll have to use an iron-on patch. Well, not an iron-on patch, but you can use like an adhesive to stick the fabric on, just to make sure that it's well, you know, set right. Hopefully this doesn't come out all screwy. The trouble is, using a machine like this, because the needle can go backwards and forwards, uh, sorry, side to side, um, 
you can screw up a little bit. Which is not what I want. Now, that's good. So what I'm finding is it's going through this uh, join here quite easily. It's not getting all screwy and stuffing up and complaining. Which is what you'd hope for a thousand dollar machine. Luckily I only paid five hundred dollars for it, so, you know, a bit of a bargain. Gotta be careful about that thread at the back. Huh. I wonder if it actually can sense the uh, thickness of the fabric and is compensating for it. That'd be nice. Now, one of the things I found difficult with my other machine, because I didn't have the thread cutter, is losing a significant amount of the cotton, of the thread, sorry. I mean, it's partially cotton, it's also got polyester in it, but that's the thing that bothered me the most. So I'm, whoops, I'm hoping that isn't gonna happen here. Now what happens if I leave the foot up? Ooh, it doesn't have a sensor for that. So what my previous machine would do is it would chuck a wobbly if the presser foot was left up. This one just seems to want to sew. <sighs> There we go. And back tack. And forward. And cut. And up. That was useful. It automatically set the f uh, needle in the up position once you cut it. Which is a neat little feature. It makes life easier. Okay, so before what I was talking about when I said bar tack, that's what a bar tack is. And I'm not going to be dim. Oh, it's because of the belt loop. Alright, so underneath. Yeah. Where are my scissors? So I am happy with that. Yeah. It came out pretty good. Now. Another thing I need to do is to patch that hole up. So what I was shown is if you fold in the sides, make the hole bigger, not a huge amount, but just a little. Oh yeah, I'm gonna butcher this. Well, it's the only way I'll learn. Oops. See, if I was doing this for a client, I would probably be making a much larger hole. I'd be cutting out this um, bit here, which is also worn. So that can go through like that. I'm going to tuck that under. Really, there are multiple ways of doing this. But here's this one way. Oops. There we go. I mean, really, the way I want to do this in the future is just be able to cut out the section and then put in my own, but I can only do that with pattern making. And that is still a, ooh, that's not good. Yep, that's not good. Well, that's gonna be some time away. Just poke that through there. Okay, now let's see if I can do with this side. So up. 
Yeah, that press foot doesn't go as high as I would like. I mean, I've seen put people try to put through like really thick pieces of whatever through a machine like this and yeah. All right, so I'm going to do something that's probably not the smartest idea, but whatever. Oh, I hate how it's gotten dark. So I'm going to go in one, two, three, back and forward. Ooh, that's a little close. That I should be able to lift it up. Pull that out. Yeah, it's still set to three. Something just doesn't feel right. Get me out. Ugh, that's not good. So just duck you in there. Well, I'll say this, I, I'll say this again. I really love how quiet it is. This thing has so less noise. It is the charm. Ooh. There's so many buttons on this thing, it's insane. Okay, so... There we go, that's better. That... I don't know why it slowed down here, but it did. I mean, I'm going to have to go cut these through. I mean, that was my industrial whoopsie. But if I wasn't behind the camera here, I'd probably be able to see this a lot better. Ooh, that's a nice shot. So I overshot it up here, which is okay. I really should have tucked that in or made it like an oval square thing, but that's that's fine. It's tied off. Yeah, I actually like that. I mean, here it sort of went off a little, but I saw that while I was doing it. If this was a client, I probably would have. I would have no, not probably. I would have back tacked and then taken it over again. But yeah. That's really not that half bad. I mean, these tails are easy to cut off. I just don't have my scissors here, which I don't know where they were. Yeah, so I'm actually happy with this. Um, the machine overall, when using it, was definitely a lot easier. Um, I mean, it, it's taking the cone just fine. Machine set up to usable defaults. I mean, buying this additional foot was a good idea. Uh, irritates me that I have to go pick up some new bobbins because I'm going to need like 20, maybe 30. 
because I like to use different fabrics and I really don't want to have that stupid incident where you have to constantly go, let's just add some to this one. Let's just add some to this one. No. Uh, this foot was definitely worth the purchase. Although it's going to be a shame when it does actually degrade. The problem is if I buy a second one of these and you keep it in a good room, it's still going to degrade over time. And the, the only place where it's actually getting any grip is the back and the front. Now these side teeth, uh, the, the, side, the sides on the feed dog aren't actually assisting. It's just the two little at the front and the two little at the back. So that's, that is not good. But with that said, I'm gonna stick this under here. And yeah, this has been a great unboxing and review of my new sewing machine. Learning the computer part's gonna be a bit of a pain. No idea what that, ah, uh, mirrored. Yeah, it's not happy. So uh, yeah, that's my review of the Singer or well, my unboxing and first impression of my new Singer Heavy Duty sewing machine. Um, I'm conflicted because the machine itself is generally fine, but the parts that came with it are just terrible. <laughs> Still, I like the, I like that new foot, this thing, I like that. This is just a add-on accessory that I thought, yeah, I'm going to need it, which obviously I did, but it's not. <sighs> oh, well. Might be conflicted, but I still like the machine. I'm just going to turn it off. Well, it's been a while since my last clip. Um, now, I did purchase a few extra things, and this is one of them, which is an extension table. It's similar to what I have on my brother machine, and I honestly don't want to be limited to that small space, so I much prefer to have a larger flat area on top of the machine, well, on level with the machine to work with. So this, this is going to be a uh, big purchase. Now all up, I did spend about $120, but that's just rounding it up, so there is a bit of a difference. Anyway. I also purchased this, which is an extra bobbin case. The purpose for that is that if I accidentally damage the actual bobbin case, or if I'm having really hard time with the tension, I've got that, or if I need to put in a really thick thread for whatever reason, I have this. So it's more as, a, more as an emergency backup. And me being a bit pedantic, I bought this, which I really didn't need to wasn't an absolute 100% um, necessity purchase, but it is a replacement throat plate, which is a just in case. Hopefully I never have to use it and it ends up being a waste of money, but I do have it, which makes me feel better. I mean, so is this. I mean, if this goes, um, the one in the machine, I've got a replacement, whereas uh, this, significant damage would have to occur to this before you'd have to replace it before using it. I mean, you can sand these down with some fine grain um, sandpaper to get its use back, but in general, with that said, let's unbox this extension table. Now, I haven't actually opened this since I got it. Now, here we go. Now, an important thing is I have had this for a while, so it's been sitting around for more than a week, which is a real shame. But I've had something else come my way, which uh, I'm hoping to make a couple of videos on later on, because it's more than one. And it's really exciting. I mean, this is uh, nice, but yeah, let's just say it's a bit, um, it's a bit of a specialty. So let's see how this comes packed. Now I did get this on special uh, during the Mother's Day sale, but it was ordered from the local uh, sewing shop. So 
So the table definitely looks a bit smaller than the uh, brother. Eh. I mean, if it wasn't for that hole, it would probably be a little bit more rigid, but that is basically what I'm looking for. Huh, interesting. Now, the other thing that can be said is that while I do have this now, later on down the track, if I decide to make a table for the sewing machine to actually sit into, I can use this as an expensive template and cut a bit of plywood, hopefully plywood, because MDF is like, uh, yeah, cut it, can just use this to cut out the shape and I'm pretty much good to go. And it looks like there'll be enough room in here to keep this. One other thing that really irked me about the machine is that there's no there's no real space to store the extras. Something I will have to do later on is make a video of producing a proper case for it. Well, that'll only really be made of fabric, so I've got to look at some sort of canvas material. Yeah. Anyway, so off the bat, let's see if this is set up. Usability. Yeah, that's pretty straight. All right, I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to put up my sewing machine and move my camera. All right, second recording. Uh, these are the bobbins that I picked up. They are pretty much the same, but they don't, they're not exact. Still popped one in, tested out, it worked. There was no little fighting. So first I'm going to remove this. Now, I don't know about you, whoever is watching this, it would have been interesting to see if one of these extension tables had been designed so that you can leave this on, but still have it on there. I mean, accessing parts would be a real you know, pain in the ass, but nevertheless. Mm. Now, I have done a few other things with this machine since my original recordings and the default foot that comes with it, after some work with it, I haven't had any issues. There's been no, uh, I haven't had to fight with it as much. When I do go over bits that are deep, such as like um, a seam that came with a pair of pants, I notice the machine tries to push through. If it doesn't, it gives more oomph to fully penetrate and complete the stitch, which I like. The up and down needle setting, I've always been getting that correct when I've been using it. I love the cutting mechanism. You have no idea how much I've enjoyed that. It's just, I can sit there and be like, cut. And it's done. I don't have to fret about it. There's no, uh, getting in there and trying to cut it and then pulling out the thread and cutting it again. So I'm finding that I'm using, overall it doesn't really matter, but just knowing I'm using that little bit less thread is makes me a bit more happy. Now, I do have stuff here that could be interfering with the machine. So can I, there we go. All right. Now, the bottom feet are, okay, I don't have to adjust that. Nope. Yep. Now I'm just gonna move this forward towards me. Yeah, that's good. I don't know, it does seem a little short, this tabletop compared to what brother has. Now I'm using it as an example because that's what I've been using for a number of years was my brother machine to do all kinds of sewing, uh, well, for the most part. Um, I might 
because this is generally straight angles, it might it should be a lot easier to cut a new tabletop and make my own. But still, you might think, well, then this was a negative investment because what are you going to do? I mean, it's if you're going to build your own. I have something to work from, which makes life easier. And while it's expensive, um, I prefer the easy part. Yeah. Trouble is, does this fit? What would have been nice, I mean, really nice, if the table was a little bit um, longer, maybe a little bit wider, so that you could fit this underneath. Because if you could slide this in and out, well, you've got easy access to a, your tray other than having to constantly go over to where it is or reach over and grab it. And, yeah. Oh, well. Now, I haven't had uh, any, I haven't had a chance to use some of the more advanced stitches, so. Still would love to get my, uh, get a trial on these M3 and M4 stitches, but that'll be for another day. Hmm. So, overall, with this purchase, uh, $620, if you want to round it up because the machine was like 500, uh, 400 and something dollars for 90 something dollars. Whereas it was like a hundred and how much? $119 and 60, but this tabletop was also on special. For that price, uh, I'm happy with what I've got. If I paid full price for the tabletop and for the sewing machine, I wouldn't be so happy. Uh, I'm still gonna point out the sensor to tell when the presser foot is up. I wish that had something like that built in, but obviously the machine doesn't. The foot that it came with, I'm quite happy with. The accessories I'm generally okay with. They do cover your basics. Three needles. Personally, I would have liked to have seen uh, collection of needles, uh, showing the different types of needles for what you can do, maybe instructions about where to use it, say for instance you've got your stretch fabrics, denim, um, you know, knitwear, there's the thicker stuff, the thicker thread, although you probably won't, I don't know if most people will be using that, but anyway, uh, I'm probably, I'm not going to be using this foot as much as I originally intended, since the default foot that came with the machine generally does it, the general zigzag. I'm still not happy about the unpicker and brush. It just seems this was a sort of afterthought for whatever they can throw at it, it's cheap. Um, as for the bobbin, here we go. I would have preferred to have three of these. So I've only got two. Now these effectively sit. This is the one I'm thinking of. The one I can find. This effectively, uh, you sit in front of your bobbin and it will, it just stops it from moving around too much. I wish that they had the intermediate size. Like my brother, it has the big, medium and small size uh, spool caps, where this one's only got the one. I still have to give this a go, but I haven't uh, had a real chance to use the button attachment yet. In time, I hopefully will. Oh, and just screw this. Now, to be fair, yes, it is at a decent height. It has the bits that will get in and do what you want properly, but I believe this is still a joke. This is made at its most budget, and I'm glad that a lot of the engineering went into the actual machine itself, because while these bits can become broken, or over time they can be lost, in general, 
from what I've seen on the inside of these machines where you've had actual technicians, sorry, mechanics uh, disassemble them and then review the internal parts. I'm generally satisfied, so decent motor. Uh, hopefully it's still mostly metal internally and not a lot of plastic because I want long term, I don't want short term. It, it, it's just my thing. You know, these buttons are in the right place. I can be working here and go back tack, back tack, hold, pause it if I need to. Speed of the machine at full blast is too fast for me, but speed control is great. Uh, maybe a little longer would be nice. Anyway. Hmm. Nah. For me, the display isn't too difficult to understand. Uh, although I am wondering when machines like this will end up coming with a color display, but you know, who knows. I really don't like down here. So for instance, these cards, while they are convenient, because there's nothing really protecting the machine, uh, if this is put into an area where things are swiping past it, these can become these might become broken. At which point it becomes a real irritant. So I'm not particularly pleased about how these cards are kept. The brother machine I have on top of the handle, you'd have like a little stand. Unfortunately that doesn't come with any anywhere to like safely store it, so it's broken. It still will sit up there, but one of the clips is unfortunately snapped, which is just mm. Not happy about it. Uh, the threader, I've had a bit more success with that, with using it. I'm gonna try, I believe it's similar to what's on the Janome uh, machine that I have, that like, one I got from work that I did a repair video on, or multiple repair videos. I'm gonna try that on that machine as well, see if it works. Uh, I like the brother mechanism far better as you literally just put the thread in push down and it does everything automatically you don't have to hold the thread or anything so I mean that machine was a lot cheaper than what this would have been at full price when it was new and it's I think it was discontinued six or seven years ago hmm. anyway constantly rambling but uh I just wish I had more uh, time to use this machine compared to doing what I'm doing with some other sewing stuff I have, which I really can't wait to show. Mm. I should have made videos going through it, but you know what? The final part's just gonna be hopefully beautiful, as long as everything works out and I don't end up getting egg on my face. No wait, that happens a lot, it doesn't matter. Anyway, um, so yes. Got my whole setup now. I haven't actually tried to use this, so I hope. Yeah, see, so I'm able to move the whole table. That's that's pretty stuck on there. So, <laughs> brand new sewing machine. Anyway, I am now going to say yibbity yibbity and yibbity yibbity.